Hi, thank you for tuning into the Short Stack. I'm Lisa Quintero, young adult librarian. And I'm Nick Barron, patron and sometimes volunteer. This is the show where we talk to you about what we've been listening to, reading, or watching. And this week we're going to be talking to you about audiobooks. But first, library news. So this last week we went to Curbside, as many of you probably know. And Curbside is a little bit different this time than it was last time. So last time we were asking people to schedule visits and we weren't able to print things and it was... Uh, the hold button wasn't working on the computers, and so there was a whole, it was, it was very complicated. This time it's a little bit easier. Um, you can place your own holds online, or you can call us and we can place holds for you. You can pick up materials anytime that we are open, and we are currently open the same hours that we were right before we closed. Um, and you can also still print things. Um, so you can work with a librarian to print something either off of a flash drive or you can email it to our printer and we can print it for you and then we collect payment when you get there. Um, we also are doing the, this new thing called librarian picks because we understand that a lot of you like to browse our shelves, but that's not possible right now since you can't come into the library. So the way librarian picks works is there's a form for adults and teens and then there's a separate form for children. So you pick what kind of materials you like, whether you want uh, books or movies or CDs or audiobooks, and then you give us some genres that you like or some titles or authors that you recently read that you liked, and we will pick a bundle of books for you um, based on what you tell us about yourself and your interests. Uh, and so you can pick, you know, there's a, a few different buttons that you can click. You can do like zero to six books or like six to 11 books or more. Um, so so yeah, if you're interested in, in having a librarian, you know, pick some some books for you. We've, we've already had a few requests. We had, you know, people call or, or uh, submit forms earlier this week too get picture books selected for their children, and we had uh, some adults also ask for specific types of books. So, um, And you can find those links on our website. The children's one is under the children's menu on the page, and then the adult one is under Explore, I believe. And they also, if you receive the Shoreward Library newsletter, there are links to both of the forums in the Shoreward Library newsletter. What about for me? I only read half a book at a time. <laughs> I can't help you with that. I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, if you want recommendations on stuff that you can start and not finish, uh, we, can, we can do that for you. Um, so then we also have several events coming up. So our um, assistant director and director, assistant director Emily and our director Rachel, are going to be having an open house about curbside later this month on December 8th. Um, there are going to be two different sessions, one from 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and one from 4 to 4.30 p.m. And they're going to be via Zoom, and you can find the link for them on our calendar at shorewoodlibrary.org. And so they will answer any questions that you have about the new curbside services and kind of talk about some of the new things that we are offering this time around that we didn't have last time. Then on December 9th, there will be an art part, as always, on Wednesdays. On December 15th, Miss Heidi will be doing a rhyme time in the morning. And then on December 16th, which is another Wednesday, there will be another art part. On December 17th, we have the Morning Book Club with Haley, and you can uh, look for the Zoom information on our calendar. And we are also going to have a teen self-care kit that you can pick up that day, um, which is going to contain uh, some ingredients to make your own lip balm and some tea to calm yourself and some things to make a lavender sachet. Uh, so yeah, you know, different things to calm you if you're if you're feeling stressed out as the holiday season approaches and finals and all of those things we understand, so we're going to have a, a teen take and make. And then on December 18th, there will be a grown-up take and make, and I believe the supplies for that are going to be to make a wreath. Um, so that's what we've got coming up. Very nice. From the stacks? Yep, from the stacks. So like I said, we're talking about audiobooks today, um, and Nick and I like to listen to a lot of different audiobooks because, you know, they're, uh, they're a good thing to do when you are doing the dishes or, you know, you're doing laundry or, you know, you just start doing some some sort of task that doesn't require all of your attention. Um, it's cool to listen to them. Also, I found that for me, audiobooks this year have been a savior because I have had problems focusing on the written work. And so I listened to so many audiobooks this year as opposed to actually reading books this year because I just could not sit still and like concentrate on, on the written word. Yeah. <clears throat> and one of the things that, that prompted us to want to do this particular uh, subject is we were doing a jigsaw puzzle and we were listening to Good Girl's Guide to Murder, mm -hmm. um, which uh, um, was one of these, these audio books that had a bit more of an audio drama type of feel. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I was like, 
you know, maybe we should talk about this because, you know, the narration and uh, some of the production values that they add into some of these things make it a different experience. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but some, you know, folks who don't listen to audiobooks uh, may not realize that, yeah, audiobooks can provide you a completely different experience than reading a book um, because some of them sometimes it'll be like Nick said, the production values, whether it's the Good Girl's Guide to Murder, it's about a girl who, um, is investigating the murder of a another high school girl that died a few years back and her friend was accused of the murder and she wants to clear his name. And so the way that the that the audiobook is done is it's mostly told in her voice, but then like as she's interviewing people, you get different voices for those characters and like, you know, she's interviewing somebody over the phone, it sounds like you're talking to somebody over a phone like it would on a radio drama. If she's, you know, interviewing somebody in person um, sometimes, you know, and she's like recording it, sometimes it'll have that sort of, you know, we're sitting here like a journalist recording something kind of feel. Um, and I think that's really neat. And um, so we're going to be talking about a few different books that offer different types of experiences than what you would get from the regular book, you know, the, the print copy of a book. Yeah. And one of the things that uh, I, was, I was just researching a moment ago, just to make sure that, uh, so that I could, I could articulate clearly uh, the difference between an audio book and these ones that we're talking about with these high production values and an audio drama, mm. like the old school radio dramas, is that things like, you know, when it says in the text that so-and-so sighs, in an audio drama, they just sigh. Whereas mm. in with audio books, they are reading the full written word. They're just throwing throwing in, in these cases, some some additional things like, the sound of being on a phone or what have you, just some production value things. Yeah, and some audiobooks don't don't include those things, but the audiobooks, you know, that are just straight straight reading of the book um, can still be really good because if you have a, a very emotive narrator, um, they can convey the story in a way that it's exciting. Uh, occasionally, we have run across audiobooks where the narrators are just completely monotone, and yes. like the the ballad of songbirds and snakes, where we just you know. There was there was there was emotion behind his voice in some scenes, but in other scenes it just like when it when there was like singing or things like that, it was just lacking, and it it took away from the experience for me at least. I don't yeah. know about you. Yes. <laughs> um, and so you know sometimes uh, the thing about audiobooks that's that's exciting sometimes is that they they can be hit or miss in terms of you know whether you've got a good narrator or yeah. not. So yeah. So if, if anybody's interested in the, a good girl's guide to murder, that is by Holly Black, and it is available on Libby. Uh, it's a really cool mystery and um, very, very gripping. And yeah, Nick really enjoyed listening to it while you're we while we doing our jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. So what's one of your favorite audiobooks and what did you like about it? Uh, so uh, the one that immediately came to mind uh, was actually Ready Player One, mm -hmm. which don't go see the movie. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't bring the movie home. It's garbage. I hated it. Um, the book, though, is fantastic, uh, but the audiobook version is read by Will Wheaton, and you can tell that he's got an absolute passion for the material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for those who don't know, uh, Will Wheaton was uh, Wesley Crusher in Star Trek, and he has been in a few different things as an actor, but he also... He was in Stand By Me. Yeah, he was in was Stand By Me. was one of the kids in Stand By Me before he was Wesley Crusher. But he's also a huge nerd. Um, and so we, we are both people who are into board games and role-playing games and things like that. And Will Wheaton um, does a, a vlog of, you know, him playing games with people. And he does, he's, into really, he's into nerd culture a lot. And, and Ready Player One is all about no nostalgia about nerd culture. And you can tell his ties to the material as he's reading it. And he reads it with so much enthusiasm. And being an actor, you know, he just really brings it to life. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, I think um, another one that I really liked that was similar to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder but a little bit different was Sadie, and that one is by Courtney Summers and is available on Hoopla. That one was a another mystery, and it was about this girl who disappears after, um, after some stuff happens, and her family is trying to look for her, and there's this guy who decides, you know, he's going to do a podcast about her. And so he is going to track down her friends and her family and try to figure out what happened to Sadie because, you know, as the podcaster, he says that he has a daughter and he worries, you know, he thinks about all the girls that go missing 
every year and how nobody looks for them or how, you know, nobody seems to care. Like they just become another another forgotten name, a forgotten person. And she's a like a lower class girl and she um you know lives in a trailer park and a lot of people don't care when she goes missing. She just she just disappears. Her her mom has been absent for a while because her mom was a drug addict and she was being raised by her grandmother and something happened to her sister and she just disappears. And so nobody knows if there was foul play at, at hand or if, you know, something else happened. And so if you like podcasts that follow, you know, a mystery like that, um, yeah, like it, serial it, or something yeah, like that, it, 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 it's, it has it, that feel in it and it's recorded like a podcast. Yeah, it's, re- it's recorded like a true crime podcast. Yes. And it's funny because like I've, I've looked at the book and, and the book is written like a podcast, but but you get more of the production value and you get the different voices. So, you know, there's a, a guy narrating for the guy who's doing the interviewing and there's different char- different actors doing the different voices of the different characters. Sometimes in audiobooks, you'll get one person doing all of the voices and sometimes they do great and sometimes they don't do as great. I really like it when they invest into having different actors for all the different characters that yeah. it has more of a, of a drama feel. Yep. And so uh, one of the ones that uh, that I wanted to talk about was actually one of the ones that uh, we uh, we covered in our second or third episode. I think it was our second episode, yeah. which was the Beastie Boys book. And the Beastie Boys book was unique because they, the Beastie Boys themselves, are such they're they're such dorks about everything. Mm. Um, they elected to read certain sections themselves. And the, the sections read by Ad Rock are fantastic. Um, but they also, they had a whole cast of, uh, of entertainers and personalities do different, uh, different sections of the book. Because the book is, is written in a series of, of like two to three page anecdotes. Mm. And so some of the, some of the noteworthy ones were John Stewart, Ben Stiller, Kim Gordon from Sonic Youth, mm-hmm. Chuck D from Public Enemy. <clears throat> And uh, Amy Poehler. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there was a, a whole list of, of different people that all read the book. For me, like the John Stewart one, the Kim Gordon one, they were all excellent. Um, not everybody um, had this, this, the same level of, of delivery, uh-huh. um, but you know it added something. You know, gave gave each of the sections personality. Yeah. Though I still think that the ad rock sections were best. Yeah. Do you remember? Did you listen to that on Hoopla or Luby? Uh, I think that was on Libby. Okay. And I just looked up Ready Player One, and that one is by Ernest Klein, and that one you can find as audio on, let me see, where did it go? Libby. Yeah, so. Yeah, I, I, we, we neglected to give the backstory on that, but it's, it's okay. Just the, the important thing is that it really takes all of this 80s nostalgia for Atari games and Dungeons and Dragons and all these things, and, and, uh, Moves it all into a uh, a, fu- a near future sci fi story, and it's great. Yeah, it's, it's a, a story in the future where where everybody kind of lives in a video game rather than living out their lives in real life. And, and it's a, it's 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 about virtual reality. Yeah, virtual reality. And there's a a video game designer, very wealthy video game designer, who hides an Easter egg in one of his video games, and whoever figures it out is able to win his whole fortune in his company. And so yeah. um, there's a lot of a lot of gaming nerds who start fighting it out for it in this virtual reality world and in real life because their trailers get blown up and things yep. like that. It's very, very gripping, very exciting, action-packed. Uh, like Nick said, don't watch the movie. The movie was terrible, but uh, the the book, the audio book, are both great. Yeah, and there's a sequel now, right? Ready Player yeah. Two. I'm really excited for uh, for Ready Player Two, which uh, released uh, the weekend of Thanksgiving. Yep. Yeah, and I have us on the hold list for the audiobooks that we yeah. listen because Will Wheaton is narrating it again. So yes, yeah, so I have a few others on my list um, that are kind of illustrate some different types of audiobooks as well. Uh, one of them is When Dimple Met Rishi, which is a young adult novel by Sandia Manon, and I think that's how you pronounce her name. I'm not sure if I butchered it. I am sorry. Um, and she is uh, uh, her book is about these two characters who are of um, Indian descent, and they are two very different people. Uh, Dimple is this girl who just wants to go to coding camp, and her parents are all worried about her getting a husband and wanting to set up an arranged marriage for her and all this stuff, and she does not want any part in that. She just wants to like 
have a career and be herself and not have to worry about children and husbands. And Rishi is this very type A um, guy who is trying to do everything to please his parents, but what he secretly wants to do is he wants to be an artist. And so it's told from both of their different perspectives. So they have two different narrators, one for Dimple and one for Rishi. And the book itself, the, the actual uh, paper book, is told from their both of their perspectives. And so it's cool because you get an insight into both of their, their thinking behind you know, what they're doing. And so they both end up at this coding camp and they, you know, neither of them is looking for love, but they fall in love. Yeah. And uh, it's a very cute story. Very, you know, if you like rom-coms. Um, yeah, it was, I, I I didn't listen to the entire thing with Lisa, but it was a, a constant fixture in the, in the car for a while. And it is a very cute story. Yeah, very cute, very heartwarming. So if you're looking for something like this holiday season, I, I recommend When Dimple Met Rishi. And, and it also gives you, uh, gives you insight into other cultures, which is yeah, it's uh, really cool because you you get an insight into into you know other cultures and also different families in other cultures because there's some things that you know kind of are overarching about family expectations in the South Asian culture, and then there's other things that you know are are different, and then also you know because every every immigrant family that comes to the United States um, deals with things differently. You know, some some families are like, we have to completely assimilate and Americanize ourselves. And other families are like, we're going to cling to our traditions. And so, you know, it kind of illustrates some of that stuff and, and you learn some different things about in, in Indian culture. So, yep. so it was cute and I learned something. Yeah, no, I like that one. And then um, The Poet X was one of my favorites of, I believe it came out last year by Elizabeth Acevedo. And that one is a novel in verse and it's also a young adult novel. And it is about this girl. It's a coming of age story. And she lives in New York and she just wants to be a poet and she wants to be free. And her family's very religious and very Catholic. She has a brother and her brother's allowed to do whatever he wants. But since she's a girl and she's Dominican, like her family is very strict about what she can and can't do. And, um, you know, she notices that as a as a girl, she's treated differently, not only by her family, but by the people in the neighborhood and by people, you know, at school and by by was that was that the cooking school one? No, that's okay. same same author, different okay. different book. Okay. Um, and she's, you know, she's it's you know her learning about how you know patriarchy works and and kind of wanting to break the mold and just be herself. Um, and she does it through her poetry, but nobody really knows about her poetry and her, except for her English teacher. And her English teacher pushes her to compete in this this big competition so she can get a scholarship because her English teacher thinks that she's very smart and very talented and wants her to go to college. And so the author actually reads it. And so I think I, I liked it when the authors read the books because they know what they intended to put into the book. And, you know, Elizabeth Acevedo is a poet. And so the book is told in verse. Um, and so all of the poems carry the right nuances because she herself is the one reading them, which I really enjoyed. And that one is available on... Let me see. Hoopla right now. All right. So another one that I really enjoyed was Stamped from the Beginning by Dr. Ibram X. Kendi. And that one is available on Hoopla and Libby. And he is a history professor. And Stamped from the Beginning is about the history of racism in the United States. And he breaks it all down. And one thing that I really like about it is it's like listening to a very informative podcast. Um, he, he reads the book himself. And um, I've read other, you know, I've listened to other nonfiction books and I, I enjoy them when they are narrated by the author as well, or even when they're not narrated by the author, because, it, you know, it's you're learning something as you're listening. And so he he goes into the history of racism, starting with slavery and um, indentured servitude here in the United States and goes all the way up until the present. And so a lot of things that we are taught in school are not exactly correct like we are taught in school that abraham lincoln was the best president ever for for black people and that you know he freed the slaves and this and that but if anybody studies history like i, I was a history major and, and when you look at primary documents and um you look at, at the actual text from the time you find that he was not as great as everybody thinks he is um he was somebody who did what he did because it was a compromise um not because he was you know this mighty hero who thought that, yes, slavery must end. Like, he was okay with slaves still being a thing. He just wanted to make everybody happy. He was playing the politics game. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think, you know, he illustrates a lot of that stuff that 
that we we don't know because we're taught we're taught certain things in history classes in elementary school and high school that just aren't really true. It's funny. I saw a thing on Twitter a few weeks ago that made me laugh because it's true that like a lot of getting a history degree is unlearning all of the history that you learned in elementary school and high school. Yeah. I remember my one of my history professors like hammering into us that you know we were taught that in high school that the U.S. Constitution was based on the Magna Carta. And he was like, that is a complete fallacy, you know, <laughs> and like, like, if you look at the Magna Carta, you look at the Constitution. And, and so, so yeah, in, in college, like, you, it's weird to have to go back and unlearn everything that you learned, that we, we are taught things that aren't necessarily true, or that are biased in, in certain ways, um, or that are very, very oversimplified for the minds of, of young children. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I think it's a disservice, especially to, to, you know, teens and, and, even, you know, younger kids than that, I feel like, you know, kids are, are ready for the truth at a younger age, but we we try to protect them, I guess, I don't know, or, you know, try to feed them these, these ideas in order to make them think that America is a certain thing that it may or may not be, you know? Yeah, cer- cer- certain things ultimately become more myth and legend than actual history. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like the... The, the story of Thanksgiving and the the uh, the Native Americans helping us through the the that first winter. Yes, or George yeah. Washington and his wooden teeth and chopping chopping down the cherry tree. <laughs> yes, exactly. So so yeah, so there's there's a, a lot um, that we learn that is it's true. It's it's not entirely true or sometimes is completely false, but uh, has like a kernel of truth that is at the core of the story. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, so it's you know interesting listening to to audio nonfiction audiobooks, um, whether they're about history or about science or about different topics, and, and learning some things and kind of you know thinking about the things that you've learned already and, and how those tie into what you're learning now. Um, so yeah, and then uh, let me yeah. see. I believe I had one more. Did you have something? To say? I was just gonna say it's. I actually wish that more authors read their own. Uh, narrated their own audiobooks as I, like for example I, I've listened to a bunch of books um, written by Naomi Klein mm-hmm. and she is so well spoken in person or you know when she's in interviews or what have you but yeah she's she never narrates any of her own books mm-hmm. just you know kind of disappointing yeah um, you know, I think different people you know some of us know our own weaknesses and our own strengths, and, and yeah. you know, if you know that you're going to be somebody who reads it in a monotone, or you just don't want to read your work, you know, or you're just going to sound tired. Or, I, I, I think it's more 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 of a time thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, you're as as a journalist, she's probably busy working on her next story. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, you know, I think I think it's different for each author, um, but I do think that you know when people narrate their own stuff, it does carry a certain gravitas that yeah. it doesn't carry when. When it's read by somebody else, though, you know, um, when it's read by somebody else, it can be just as entertaining um, as I will talk about with my next book. Yep. My next book is The Rosie Project, and that one is available on Libby by Graham Sinsian. <laughs> um, he is an Australian. He is an Australian author, and um, that one is actually narrated by somebody different than Graham Sinsian. And I can't be- remember the author or the narrator's name, but the narrator does a great job of doing the Australian accent. And um, <laughs> the book is about a professor from Australia who is on the on the Asperger's uh, spectrum, and he is having problems finding a lady partner, and he's lonely. And oh, he, I remember this. And he doesn't know what he's supposed to do, and so he comes up with a mathematical equation because he's a math professor. He's like a genius. He's a math professor. And he comes up with a mathematical equation that will lead him to finding the perfect mate. And so he starts executing his, his you know, search project in order to find this perfect woman. And along the way, he meets a woman named Rosie, and she is a waitress, and she is nothing like what his calculations say he should be looking for. And along the way, he goes on all these, like, you know, blind dates and stuff that just go terrible. And then he, um, since he's on the, on the spectrum, you know, his reactions to some things are just humorous um because he doesn't see the world in the same way as neurotypical people do and so um yeah it's all about about him falling in love with with rosie and and how 
love just kind of hits us and it's not something that you can predict with math or with you know whatever and, and it's uh it's very cute yeah and it's actually a series it's the first one of a of a three-part series um, but I will not tell you what the second two books are about because I do not wish to spoil things. Yes. Um, you, you do wish to spoil things. <laughs> but I but, won't. But you, you will restrain yourself. But yes, and if you enjoy the Australian accent as much as I do, it's a fun fun listening because, uh, you know, the, the narrator does a really great job of, of doing the, the accent and it's, it's very fun. Very good. <clears throat> So yeah, as a podcast listener, you know, I'm guessing that many of you enjoy listening to things via audio. And if you do, you should check out some of these different titles that we mentioned. You should also, you know, uh, look for audiobooks that are narrated by people that you enjoy. Um, I know many years ago when I was in grad school, I listened to Lemony Snicket just because Tim Curry narrates it. And I love mm. Tim Curry and I love his voice. And that just made those books great for me. I mean, they are great books on their own, but it just made them even better because, you know, it's a series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket, <laughs> and he's so good at the, the, you know, this is all doom and gloom and <laughs> voice and these poor children. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, looking for narrators, at, at, whether they're actors or or once you find a certain narrator, like there's a, a woman narrator who anytime she narrates anything, I will listen to it. Her name's Bonnie Turpin. And she narrated it on The Come Up, which is the new Angie Thomas book. She's the person who wrote The Hate You Give. And she's narrated a bunch of other books that I've listened to as well. And I really enjoy her her narration. So whenever I see that something is available, because that, that's one thing that, that if you didn't know, on Hoopla or Libby or even in the, the County Cat catalog, you can look by narrator. Um, so like if you were looking for Will Wheaton, you can look up Will Wheaton and you look up audio. And like uh, on the left side column, you can... If you're in County Cat, you can do just audiobooks, and then it'll bring up all the audiobooks that he has narrated. So he did Ready Player One, and he's also done a few John Scalzi books and has done a few other things as well. Um, and so, yeah, we also have the audiobooks available on CD. If you still have a CD player, I still have a CD player in my car, so I still listen to them in my car. But, uh, but mostly I just listen on, on Hoopla and Libby these days because um, that's what I have in the house more than anything. But, yeah. I, I was going to second the come up. Um, on the come up? On the come up. That... That was great. Yeah, that one is, uh, is, like I said, it's by Angie Thomas, and it's about this girl who, uh, who her dad passed away, and she, her dad was a rapper, and she wants to become a rapper as well, and she is, you know, kind of teased by people in the neighborhood because she's a girl, and they're like, yeah, you're not going to be good enough, you know, or near as good as your dad, and she proves everybody wrong, and it includes a lot of her, her rhymes and things like that, and it was, it was really good. Yep. Great narration. And I believe Angie Thomas is doing a sequel to that that's supposed to be about the girl's dad, which I'm excited about. I really yeah, enjoy yeah. her books. Yeah, and so so hopefully hopefully in the next podcast or two, maybe we'll we'll get to that Ready Player Two. Yeah, maybe we'll see. Where we're, I know we're like number twelve on the hold list right now, and I put it on hold a while ago. So yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. But uh, I hope so. We'll talk about it for sure in a future episode because I am excited. I do not know what to expect. Um, I listened to Armada, which is another Ernest Klein book, and I wasn't a huge, huge fan of that one, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I need to check that one out because one of our friends was telling me that they loved it. And okay. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa wasn't that into it. My friend Alex loved it, so I gotta, I gotta check it out. Yeah, you might like it. Yeah. Well, as always, thank you for listening to the Shorewood Stacks. If you have any questions or comments for your hosts, email us at shorewoodstacks at gmail dot com. You can find us on Podbean, Spotify, or iTunes. Do you have anything else to add, Nick? Uh, not today. All right. Well, thank you for listening, and be well. The Short Stacks is produced by Lisa Quintero and Nick Barron for the Short Public Library. Music for the show is by Kevin McLeod. The song is called Ice Flow and can be found on incompetech.com.